Can you say anything to the fairly specific uh, allegations that we were hearing from that attorney last night? Stealing drugs, selling narcotics, and setting up individuals? Well, I can say that accurately describes Officer Diaz. Um, I can't say that that is, is uh, well, I know it's not involved. The other five officers aren't involved in that criminal behavior, but as I have said, it appears that there may be one other indictment from an officer from this police department who currently resigned. Are you defending all six of those officers? What, I'm not an attorney. I don't know what you mean by defending. They're on administrative leave for a reason. What, what's the They're reason? on administrative leave, so the administrative leave is, it, it, we had a meeting with the uh, U.S. Attorney, with the FBI and the DA, uh, uh, DEA, along with our investigators last week um, on Friday. And they brought forward the information that the five officers were not in violation of federal law. However, there may be some policy violations in regards to that. Once uh, that was our understanding, as we do in all of our cases, when, when we hear about that type of behavior, they are placed on administrative leave with pay while we conduct the investigation. That's not only to protect it and, and protect the public from anything that we may think they may be involved with, but also to assure all the all the employees of the Bakersfield Police Department um, that we're doing the right thing. So just so I understand, you said there's one officer that you believe will be indicted, and is he also on leave? And is he that he officer? Or she that officer recently resigned, or, or uh, retired, I should say. Can you give us any information on who that officer is? I can't give you the name of the officer. The U.S. Attorney asked me not to divulge that. You have to remember, this is a federal case. I have very the documents that that were divulged last night. I got them this morning at, and, and reviewed them with the, the assistant U.S. attorney at 8:15 this morning. I didn't have um, I didn't have the um, ability to look at it last night, and so I, obviously I couldn't make a, a, a statement. Um, the attorney for uh, uh, Mr. Diaz obviously had that and, and decided to make the statement that, that he made. Without, without specifically giving his name, uh, the the. Uh, the agreement said that Diaz named his partner as someone who was assisting him in some of these crimes. Okay. Can you tell us who his partner was in I, September 2012? I don't, I don't know who that is. Can you tell me if you don't know if it's the same person who uh, recently retired? I don't know. I, I don't know. No. Okay. Are there other agencies that are involved in this investigation at all? I have not, I've been not made aware of that. So the Kern County Sheriff's Office isn't involved or isn't anyone? I've, I've not been made aware of that, but you could contact the U.S. Attorney's Office to find out. Can you tell me how you were first made aware of the officer's potential corruption and, and the investigation? Uh, back in uh, February of 2015, um, we were involved in a, in a case that was occurring, a, a, drug, a drug narcotic case with several of our officers were on. And it was divulged by us by one of the suspects that there was possible corruption within the de uh, within the department. We immediately started an investigation and placed um, Demacio Diaz on leave, and that's uh, where the indictments that that were um, publicized in November came from. So the investigation did begin right here. It did. Can you confirm the retirement <laughs> date for that officer who retired? Well, I don't have a calendar. What's the date today? The 27th? Yeah. I'm guessing the 13th or 14th. Of this month? Of this month. About two weeks ago. Yes. So back in November when all of this came to light originally, mm -hmm. for us anyway, um, and that, that, in, that came to light, well, how do you feel about having yet more problems since then? If I can characterize that way. Well, obviously there, there's one individual that uh, Mr. Diaz has claimed was working in concert with him. That's disappointing as well. Um, once we heard of that individual's name, uh, they were placed on administrative leave as well. Um, and so uh, moving forward, we thought we had done um, um, everything that we needed to do at that point. But obviously as the uh, attorney, attorney, the attorney's office was getting through the investigation, they divulged five more names that he had brought up during the investigation, but once again assured us that they were not involved in federal criminal activity. So I'm still not clear, the officer who, the former officer who could be indicted, at what point was he put on leave by your department? Oh, it, um, I believe, I, I don't know the exact date, uh, and I don't have it in front of me to tell you the truth, Carol, but I believe it was the same 
within an hour of us understanding that, that there was a problem. So prior to the, what we heard in November even, the Diaz case coming to light? I don't recall, I don't recall that. Officer Diaz was with the, the force for 17 years. Right. Can you talk about, you know, was he a good officer in those 17 years with the exception of this? Well, it seemed like he was, he, he was doing fairly well. I can tell you that obviously by reading uh, the papers uh, today that the, the uh, that he signed in the plea agreement uh, show that this this uh, criminal and corrupt activity began in uh, 2012. It seems like I can tell you that his attorney has made made him um, by his statements come out to be um, some some sort of crusader crusader or savior, and he's going to save our community from corrupt, corruption at the, the police department. I can tell you this that he is no Serpico. He did not come forward and, and, and tell any of the authorities any of the information that he had over those past three years until the indictments were handed down, okay, and he's facing a $10 million fine and life in prison. Do you think that makes it any less credible, though? His statements? No, I don't, I don't think so. I think he, uh, the individual that's uncovered is probably going to face, face some of the same problems. And, we, and like I said, we don't mind him bringing up names. We're going to investigate them. I get every name that he's he's brought up, someone has been placed on leave, and we've done the investigation. You wish it, you wish it came up sooner. I wish it would have. Yeah, I wish it would have came up in 2012. I wish it wouldn't have happened. I wish he would have came to somebody and and said, hey, I, I think this is going on, or I'm involved in this, and it would have and it would have ended. And I, I can tell you this um, wholeheartedly as well, by looking at the assets that he accumulated over those years, including a residence that is evidently valued at over eight hundred eight hundred thousand dollars which I couldn't afford, I would say this, that this would have continued to occur had the Bakersfield Police Department and the officers of, uh, here in the FBI and the DEA um, had not uh, intervened in February of 2015. So do you agree with this notion that there's a culture of corruption within the Bakersfield Police Department? I do not. The so five people under investigation right now are all day officers, or are we talking about detectives also? Well, they're from different ranks from within the department. What kind of ranks? Well, from sergeants to detectives to officers. You know, Chief, this isn't the first allegations of corruption to a police force in the United States. Uh, but speaking to what's happening here right now, how is this impacting the morale of the department and you know, speaking the integrity of the officers who put on the? Well, department? I can tell you, I, I can tell you that most people are happy that we're we're, we're ridding uh, our department of these officers. Um, it was obviously what they were doing was a clandestine operation, um, something that was not uh, brought to light until. The investigation that occurred in, in February of um, 20, uh, 2015. Um, our officers do not want to be associated with that type of behavior. Our department does not want to be labeled as a corrupt department either. So um, I would say that and assure the public that um, as we go through these uh, types of investigations, I would assure them that we do the right thing, that we uh, do our, a thorough investigation. We don't need to be first. I don't need to spread fiction. I need to get to the bottom of the matter and, and give you the facts, and that's what I'm trying to do. Since this started to happen, I think in November we heard concerns about supervision and oversight perhaps. Has the department or is the department making some changes, and, <clears throat> and maybe more specifically in, in that? Yes, yes. As a matter of fact, um, I'm glad you brought that up because I talked about this earlier, is that since this investigation began in 2015, we have been re reviewing and updating our policies, working with the DEA and FBI on doing that and looking at the oversight of these types of um, these types of divisions within investigations because you, you know when you look at investigators who are drug investigators they do have a lot of free, freedom they travel around they talk to informants they do different things and there is always the possibility no matter where you are that there's going to be some corrupt activity. The 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 instance with these people, and and I, I'm sure that when we uh, when it comes out in a couple weeks, and then uh, uh, the U.S. Attorney decides to uh, discuss the matter, we'll find that much of this activity occurred outside of their duty hours. So were there lapses? Were there shortcomings in the policies or procedures that that the department had? Well, I, I believe the informant policy uh, uh, needed to be revamped, and we've looked at that and looked at the DEA's informant or uh, informant policy. And uh, obviously, we're making changes. Now, what about the uh, the custody of, of evidence? Like, you know, he was able to walk out with 10 pounds of methamphetamine. Right. I, I can't speak to that because that didn't come from here. Okay. Um, but I, what I can tell you is that the graph often included them taking large amounts of narcotics from, from people that we never knew about.
Are you going to open or reopen or have you already any cases he was involved with? Well, that would be up to the district attorney's office and we're working with them on some of the cases that he's been involved with. In fact, I think most of them are, have either been dismissed or are working through an appeal process. Do you have an idea of when this additional former officer could be indicted? Um, my understanding is that it, it could be within the next couple months. Um, I can't uh, be exact, but the U.S. attorney might be able to give you a better idea of uh, the dates on those. I, I don't know um, exactly where they're on the investigation, but they have told me that it, does, it, it doesn't look good for, for this former officer either. And then do we have any idea of what would happen, what's the timeline or what's next with the five other officers who are currently? Well, we'll work through it administratively um, through our internal affairs uh, inv investigation and determine uh, what the outcome is is of that and you know generally the internal affairs outcomes you know either we they're sustained or in other words we find them in violation of policy or state law or um all the way to exonerated where what they've done was commendable we and we just can't tell until we look at some of the uh, what the federal investigators have done I, I don't we don't we don't have that investigation yet because it's not complete and so we're waiting for that to come forward so it could say take some time to get through that so the feds have investigated them but you have not at this point that's correct well we have started the investigation let me put it that way we just got this information if you remember friday of last week which would have been the 20th okay so i understand the feds had investigated them you get the information on the 20th right. and then you take it from remember there. because the federal government that, that did the investigation said we don't find any federal federal violations here but this is what we know okay so from a, from a local government standpoint our what we need to do then is make sure there's no state violations or any local policy violations. You said you were first made aware of Officer Diaz's actions by um, somebody during an investigation. Right. Is that something, do you take all tips like that into consideration? Yes. Was that person DEA, BPD, FBI? We were all working together on a case, we were all working together on a case and it came to light uh, when, when we were in contact with the suspect. Do you feel like the department failed at all um, just because he got away with this for so long? Well, like I said, I, I haven't seen their investigation so I don't know what was done on duty and what was done away from, away from the police department um, separate from a supervised uh, type of shift. So I'll, I'll wait to see and pass judgment on that. It's obviously disappointing, I can tell you that. Um, obvi it's obvious that we need to tighten some of our policies, our, our procedures up, which we have done. Um, as I said, um, being a narcotics investigator gives you a lot of freedom, and it's oftentimes uh, difficult to, for a supervisor to supervise people that are going to different places all the time. So um, we're trying to shore some of those uh, issues up. Um, they have been addressed, and we're still working with the, the DEA and the FBI to, to tighten our policies and procedures up. Do you know any of these six other officers personally, on a personal level? I, I know all the officers. Are you surprised to see some of those names? Well, um, I'm not surprised, but once again, I, I'll say this, is that um, my belief is just from a preliminary discussions with the federal government is they were manipulated into doing some things um, that did not look on the surface as being involved in, in a conspiracy with Officer, uh, Officer Diaz uh, and the others. Manipulated so it, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm telling you. How do you address that issue in the police department? Maybe well, you have to address it from a communications issue and, and make sure that we're reporting up to our supervisors. You know, when you have an issue where um, someone reports to one supervisor and another group reports to another supervisor mm -hmm. and they come together and do something and the people that are involved in the criminal activity leave because it's their case, these people don't generally call up to their supervisor and said, hey, this is what we did, was, that's the responsibility of these people. So if they're not reporting up, then that's the issue that we have. And so, um, you know, communication is always a key in any, any good organization. Um, and so we're trying to look at some of the possibilities away from um, utilizing certain types of devices to communicate when people, especially when we have people on off duty and on duty and coming together and being involved in these types of uh, investigations. You said certain types of devices. Can you? Well, you tell uh, cell phones. Um, you know, you, you, people have multiple cell phones. As uh, what happened with uh, uh, Diaz in this case, I think it's uh, in the investigations. We really have multiple phones, and, and generally we're required to divulge our phone numbers to the, the chief's office. Um, they didn't. They didn't do that. Do you know how many of those six officers were in the gang or uh, drug units? I don't have any idea. 
just going back to one of the things the attorney told us last night, he said this is a travesty of, of justice at the very highest level. Care to comment on that? Well, I think um, that what our officers did to um, turn Officer Diaz in is commendable. Um, I think what he does is what he did is a travest travesty. Um, it has violated the public trust. It has put the police department in a dark light at a time when we're trying to uh, build trust with our community. And so I think he was, he's right, it is a travesty what Officer Diaz did. And um, uh, he, he's gonna get what's coming to him. So how do you build that trust now? Well, we, gotta, we have to continue being out in the community and uh, uh, being a, a positive source for our, our community uh, to utilize. And we'll be out tomorrow at a, another community meeting out in Rosedale. So, so you said the idea. other officers turned him in. Is that how you phrased it? We had off. Let me let me go through this again. In February, we were on an investigation with the FBI, the DEA, the Bakersfield Police Department. Okay. During the investigation, it came to light that Officer Diaz was involved in criminal and corrupt activity. At that point, we put him on admin leave, and the investigation began. That's in 2015. That's in 2015. Is that clear? Well, I, but you indicated that other officers, so that was in the, not other officers within the department. He didn't turn himself in, like I said. Okay, yeah. Yeah, he's no, yeah. like I said, he's no Serpico. <laughs> he didn't come forward and, and, and talk about the graft that was happening in, in the department. This didn't come to light until he was caught, okay? And then the rest of it hasn't come to light until he cut a deal with the federal government to provide information, which we're taking now and investigating. And we don't mind him bringing up names. He can bring up all... 404 officers in the department. We'll, we'll investigate every one of them. So there isn't going to be another independent investigation other than what you are going to tell do. Me, tell me what you mean, Anne. The, end, the independent investigation within the department, like what you just said. Sorry, I'm just trying to... Okay. Um, our internal affairs investigation is, is going to run its course. If another government agency, the, the federal government, wants to come in and do an independent investigation, they're welcome to follow up again. But I have been assured once again, by the U.S. Attorney, okay, the Department of Justice, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, that those five officers that we currently have on admin leave were not involved in any federal criminal activity or conspiracy with the officers. The officer who's indicted, or the former officer who's indicted, and the, and the one that quite possibly could be in the near future. I think a lot of us are having trouble with the, the differences from Torres' statements last night and yours this morning. And, you know, I think Torres is often described as a police officer's uh, attorney. Oh, he's got, yeah. you know, he's highly respected. He has this military record. And he said some pretty astounding things last night. Do you, are you saying yeah, that Steve. he overstated this in a big way? Well, that, that's my opinion, okay? okay? And that's only my opinion, yeah, sure. all right? Um, you know, and I've known Mr. Torres for quite some time, and he, ha and he is a very uh, positive role model in, in our community. But until, I guess, we have more evidence of what he stated to you uh, yesterday and your reporters yesterday, I think it's overstated. We don't have that evidence at this point. Now, would I redact what I, what I said if more comes forward? Of course I would. Will he? We'll wait and see. So this case aside, are there any other investigations right now into officers at the Victual Police Department? I don't know if anybody from Internal Affairs is here, but we usually have 20 to 30 investigations going on at the same time from public complaints. Okay. When it comes to Internal Affairs investigation, as we all know in this room, generally those are things that we hear about when they happen, but we never, nobody in the public ever gets to find okay. out the results of that. Right. And I know there's laws in place right. and, and all that to protect those officers. But what's your message to the public who will likely not find out what happened to those five or six officers? Well, my message to the public is we're going to do the best job we can. I can tell you that neither myself or none of the administration at this department wants to be federally indicted for botching an investigation or for finding somebody um, uh, exonerated on a complaint where it should be sustained. And so we're going to do the best job we can. It goes through a, a, a bevy of uh, review, reviews all the way up to me and then back down and then it comes to me for, for uh, a fi final say. And so I would say that there's a lot of oversight uh, to be done, um, but the protections that officers have are what they are, okay? And unless those are changed and made, made more, le more lenient, I have, to, I have to abide by the law and make my findings on, on what it says. You talk okay. about that final decision, but obviously that's not something we find out about. So right. really, is it just a matter of we have to trust you? I, I, would, I would hope you trust me. Okay.
Are you afraid for your job? Are you scared that this is going to affect you in any way? Well, I don't know. Any of the higher ups within the department, just because this whole thing happened, I guess, under your watch? I don't believe so. I don't. I don't think that was conveyed during the investigation. Um, when we met with the federal investigators uh, the other day, that there's there's any reason to believe that anybody um, above uh, Diaz and the other officer that, that is looked at have been, have been involved or were aware of any of the, the criminal activity that was occurring. Let's talk about the impact to the, the police department. Okay. With this officer gone, his cases <clears throat> may be still open under investigation, things like that. What does that do to the police department? Well, it's like I said, I believe we've been in contact with the district attorney's office and discussed some of these cases. I believe many of them were dismissed, others are under appeal, and so that's how we handle those. Well, what I mean is, is there more of a workload for somebody now? Uh, no, I don't believe so. Does that mean real criminals could be getting off the hook because of detectives? It, it, does, it does, yes. It's very disappointing, isn't it? What's your message to Damasio today? Uh, uh, you know, he violated the public trust. Uh, he gained the trust of a lot of officers. He manipulated them into working in concert with him without the understanding that he was involved in a criminal criminal enterprise and conspiracy uh, with another individual. And uh, for that, uh, like I said, uh, next week when the when the plea is read, he'll get what he, what he has coming to him. Is it way too early to speculate what's going to happen with that with his partner in 2012 or the other five officers? I wouldn't have. Yes, it it is, and I wouldn't have any any idea, especially on the other officers, since it's not my investigation, and, and I have to rely on the attorney, U.S. Attorney's Office to finish that. This may, this goes back to the rates of officers, and I know you don't have a lot of control over it, but the pub, some pub members of the public are probably rightfully have questions about. The fact that Diaz was on paid administrative leave okay. for February 2015 to well full year, and in, in, including several months after he was indicted. Can you talk about why you were not able to maybe take him off paid leave? I can I can months? tell you I'm as conservative as most people in this county. Okay, and do I agree with, with uh, the paid administrative leave? I do not. But it is a, a matter and a point of um, California law. It's held in in our public in, in employment law, and um, it is what it is, and that's and and so we have to abide by that, and that's what we did in this case. Okay. Will we ever know the name of Diaz's partner in 2012? Who that retired officer is? If it's the same person, I, I don't know. Is that something that can be looked up? If, or it's, is that is that something that can be looked up, or is that not public record? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure they're they're on several cases together. Right, but I'm asking to, to find out. I know Stephen has. You could probably go over to the courthouse and pull up their cases, right? And, and it'd be on the same I believe I already know his name. Okay. I to, we just want to confirm it so we're not putting <laughs> the wrong kind of Stephen, well, Steve, sure? I want to share it with you. Know, <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't divulge I it. I, 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 it. I've been asked by the U.S. Attorney not to divulge it during the middle of the investigation. I'm going to talk with you in private. Okay. And, and, it, it, uh, and does it look bad for me? Sure, it does. Um, but uh, the fact of the matter is, is the case is, go is going to be completed and uh, the person is going to be held accountable for their actions as well. I can tell you that. Thank you. Okay? Thank you, Chief. All right. Good day, guys. Thank, Thank you, you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Chief. Bad circumstance.